And it took me something like two or three months just to make them believe and trust me that I'm one of them. And I had four or five groups of uh, youth, teenagers, that drop off from school, that are using drugs, that are drinking, that are outside, and the community center there want them to rebuild themselves and make them the, the next leaders of the generation. So that's what we did from 9 in the morning to 12 at night, me and a few other soldiers. And that was also the first time, maybe it's sound ironic, but that was the first time I really faced the issues of the Ethiopian community in Israel. About that time, I didn't know that the difficulties that we have are so big and so huge, and there is a lot of people searching for themselves and for their identity. And working there for a year make me understand that what I need to do in my life is giving back to my community and try to make that community stronger as I can. So, <laughs> so after the army, I decided to go to study, to university. And I guess I was um, innocent back then because uh, I went to learn Jewish history and sociality and anthropology in order to understand from those theory how the society work and which kind of common history we have. But unfortunately, the Jewish community doesn't part of the Jewish history teaching in the university. It was a small, small part of telling our story, but not everything. So I needed to study by myself. I went to the library and I found a lot of books. There's a lot of books, there's a lot of history to read, but no one is really teaching. So through the three years in the university, I learned a lot about the Jewish history at all. Very interesting, by the way. And about the society and the, and the cultures and the different cultures and the different identity that we have in Israel. And one of the things that I also discovered in the university was Hillel, the Jewish campus life on campus. And, uh, and my impact to Hillel was by uh, getting to one of the programs for equal education they had. And all of a sudden I saw a place inside the campus that given the opportunity for all the difference in the campus to represent themselves, to have a cultural event for Yiddish speakers, for Russian, a theater for English speakers, but nothing was regarding to the Ethiopian community. So I went up to the director and I asked him if I can do something for the Ethiopian teaching the heritage and the culture, and said, well, if you raise the money, you can do that. It's all about finding the right money. So we found three partners. One of them was the Jewish Agency, by the way. And we had a really nice event that grew 300 people to that learn about the history, the heritage, and the culture. And that was the first time I shared the story of myself, not a personal story, but the story of my community. And it just showed me how people are really interested to know and learn more about us and how, how little people know about the community and the history. And this has led me to another understanding in my life that it's not about um, prejudge in Israel. People asking me a lot when I'm talking if people uh, discriminate me because I'm black if, or because I'm Jewish. But it's not about that. It's more about ignorance that there is in Israel. People doesn't know too much about each other. There's so many other cultures, as I must say, there's Russian and Bedouin and Yemen's and Moroccan and us, and no one really know too much from each other and about each other to understand how we live. So that's bringing this ignorance, bringing to prejudge and bringing the discrimination that we should not have sometimes. But also traveling three years ago, I went back to Ethiopia to see where my parents grew up and when I born. And seeing the country and how they hold into country and see any, what opportunities the kids there have, just to, taught me which kind of opportunity I had uh, coming to Israel when my mom decides to come, even though she never asked me if I want to go. But the minute she decides to come to Israel, she changed my opportunity in life and she changed my 
my destiny and my future. Because in Israel, I could achieve a, a degree, I could go to the army, I could have a quality and higher education. And if I was back now in Ethiopia, it was maybe a 1% the chance that I could achieve that. Around 20% of the population there may be going to earn in education and the higher education, it's even a different story. So at the end, what I want to share with you is um, that it, it's maybe sound, it's maybe sound that it's um, very easy and comfortable to be an emigrate in Israel. And uh, I, I just want to, just to summarize, to say that it's very difficult and very complicated situation. And it's not all the time up to the, to the same person that is uh, immigrated to Israel. Sometimes it's also the society, their parents, and the environment that is growing up. And I believe that all the immigrants that in Israel can, at the end, reach to, uh, to the good place, to the positive place, only if we, we as a society, will let them do that. And when we really have an open heart and an open mind after learning and learn and uh, listen to each other, we can really have all the cultures and identity in Israel. Thank you. Thank you, Pnina. I'm sure that there are so many questions to understand a little bit what kind of experiences these kind of kids, students, have been passed in, and mainly their parents and their grandparents on their way to the States of Israel, on their way to Zion. And now I've got the privilege to introduce Jamal Al-Karnawi. He is an academic counselor for Arab students at Ben Gurion University. He provides a voice to Bedouin and Arab minority students in Israel who aim for higher education. At a young age, Jamal decided to take some action and against his teachers and family's advice, built a student's council at his school. He went on to become a social activist and students at Ben Gurion University, and later studies social work at McGill University in Canada. He is now working on his research. Jamal, please. Good afternoon and shalom. My name is Jamal al -Kirinawi. I am a community activist, a social worker, and now serve as an academic counselor at Ben Gurion University in the Negev. I am also Bedouin Israeli and proud to be here. In need, I am honored to be included in this event and feel privileged to be asked to represent the Bedouin community as a part of the Museum of Israeli Society. I am not a politician, nor I'm not an elected leader in the Bedouin Society, but I am an Israeli citizen and happy to bring you the voices of others my, like, like myself so you can hear about our experiences. I see this event as a vital contribution to the struggle against international racism and hatred between countries and peoples. And that, this is why I'm here today. We must build a world where, is nobody, where is no one is hated because of their race, religion, gender, or color. Boycott serves no purpose in, this, in, a, in achieving this aim. They are a blunt instrument whereby the good and the bad were defined together, together as undesirable. In 2000, I traveled to Poland with the Holocaust commemoration program, the March of Living on the, on, on the on university sponsored. This shared experience made me feel closer to my fellow Jew student and made me realize the need to focus on our common humanity rather than the things that divided us. I felt it was important for me to see, learn, and to pass on the important lessons from this experience. 